Hey guys, it's Flower Friday, and today I wanted to show you what's been going on with the new cottage garden and also talk to you about a plant that really started everything for me. In fact, without it, there probably wouldn't be a next level gardening. Yesterday, I got to get out here in the cottage garden and do some planting, and I cannot tell you how good that felt. So let me just show you what I did, and then I'll show you some new plants we've got ready to go into the cottage garden pretty soon, and then we'll talk about dahlias. So first off, I finally got the second red bud planted that's been waiting patiently for a year. I also planted my dianthus. I got, I think, eight of these for a buck each on clearance at Lowe's. And all my muscari and daffodils are on their way up. Bearded irises are growing. And then I also got two salvias um, on clearance at Lowe's, half price. And then there's this little sunflower that seeded itself right here. I'm gonna let it go. Now, none of this was possible until yesterday. I finally was able to flatten this out and get this path in here. Now, these aren't going to be the final path borders. Um, this is going to be some small wattle fencing that I'm going to attempt to make with the eucalyptus branches I have. So let's go down and take a look at the seedlings that I started in the fall to very soon go up there in the cottage garden. All right, so everything is coming along nicely. I want to show you this hedging. I mail ordered these two. This is box honeysuckle or Lanicera natita. I really wanted um, boxwood hedging that's going to be in our formal English garden that starts next year uh, or this fall we'll start to build it. But boxwood takes so long to grow, so long to grow. And so I wanted something that was quick growing. And this has the look of boxwood, but it grows way, way faster. Now to save money, and since I have a year, I took cuttings. I took 50 cuttings, and out of 50 cuttings, only three didn't root. I just potted them up into these six packs, and you can see the new growth on some of them already coming along. Continue to take care of these over the next year, potting them up as needed, keeping them bushy by pinching and trimming them and then they'll be ready to put out in a year. They're not gonna be a full hedge, obviously, in that time, but they'll be strong enough to be out there on their own. Speaking of pinching, you can see a lot of these are getting bushier because I've pinched them back. This one right here has not been pinched. So what you wanna do is, when they've got about three or four sets of leaves, just take that top piece, using clippers is easier, and pinch it off. And that's gonna cause these side shoots, you can see this was pinched right here, it's going to cause these side shoots to start to grow. And we're going to also take those, pinch those off as well. And by continuing to do that, you're going to get a more compact plant that actually looks like something you might buy at the garden center. I also wanted to give you an update here. We made the tulip lasagna pots. We planted these up on a video several weeks ago. And all of the tulips are starting to poke their heads out. And you can see that this chicken wire to keep the squirrels out has definitely done its job. All right, so let's talk about dahlias. Let me know in the comments if you guys have grown dahlias before. And actually, let me know if you've grown them what your favorite varieties are. They really are the plant that started everything for me. Back in 1990, a friend of mine gave me one dahlia tuber, Formby Perfection, and I have not been able to find it in decades. If you know where I can get a Formby Perfection, please let me know. So I grew that dahlia and was amazed with just the size, the shape. I, I'd never seen a flower like that before, and I was, a really new gardener at that time. And it performed so well with very little care, I was just amazed. And people who came to my house and saw it were amazed, which as a new gardener made me feel really good. 
I found out the following year that my sister's piano teacher, who was actually a neighbor of my friend that gave me the Dahlia, who actually got the Dahlia from her, uh, Jean, she was a master gardener and she grew a ton of Dahlias. And so I got to meet with her, went over to her house. Now she only lived at the street behind us, so it was really convenient. But she gave me a bunch of Dahlias to grow that next year. And um, I spent, my friend, my best friend Alan and I spent so much time with her in her garden, just absorbing all of the, you know, knowledge that she had. And her garden was really inspiring too, so it was just great to be there. I dedicated my book last year to Jean because she just really instilled in me a passion for gardening and for continual learning about gardening. Alan and I started to show dahlias competitively um, in local shows, the county fair, things like that, and um, just had a lot of fun with it. And then the county fair asked Jean to do an educational booth about dahlias. And she said, why don't you ask the boys? And so for the next many years, Alan and I had an educational booth about dahlias at the county fair. I guess that was my first time teaching about gardening. I never thought of it that way. But you only have to grow dahlias once to be hooked because there's so many shapes and sizes and forms and colors, and they're so easy to grow. That's the one thing that I didn't like because I people would come to my house and they would see all these amazing looking dahlias. And it was hard to take credit because I then had to teach them how easy it was to grow them. So I'm going to give you some basics today so you can get started. And then throughout this, this year, I'll film updates and tell you what you should be doing uh, at any given time with your dahlias. And then hopefully by the end of the year, I'll have enough footage together where then next year I can have a complete growing guide for dahlias. Now, dahlias are native to Mexico, uh, tropical regions. So so if you get freezes that freeze your soil more than six inches deep, um, you're going to have to lift them and bring them in for the winter. Now, it's not a big deal. In fact, I grew up and started gardening and growing dahlias by the beach. No frost, definitely no freezes, and I still dug them up every year and brought them in. That's just how I learned to do it, and I did it that way for many, many years. If you get frost and maybe a little bit of freeze, then you can just cover them with a, a big blanket of mulch, maybe six inches of mulch, and that should protect them. But they also are susceptible to rot. So if you have them in an area that gets flooded in the winter and doesn't drain well, um, you'll have to dig them up for that as well. So I got dahlias from several places this year. I got this one from Home Depot. Um, I remember growing this same one a long time ago. And then I got these two collections from Costco one and these are all pinks purples to go with the the theme the color palette of the uh, cottage garden now these would look really good in a tropical garden as well i would probably go with hotter colors reds oranges and yellows now dahlias might come to you in a couple of different ways they can come in pot tubers which is this little clump of tubers this one's already got a sprout on it that they grew in a little pot to keep it small uh, the the whole clump, and then they sell you the whole clump. Now, generally, when you get them through the mail, they're going to come as individual tubers. I'll put a picture here of what that looks like. Either way works. I think that the pot tubers, the little clumps that you get, are a little easier uh, to have them sprout. There's more chance of more eyes, which are the sprouting points. So you might get a get more uh, stems from the very beginning. But either way works. So these clumps from Costco are a little bit bigger. So these individual tubers, if they're not broken, if they're wiggling like that, they're broken. But where they join this stem that grew last year, you're going to see start to, and sometimes it's easier to wipe, uh, wash these off, but you'll see the little eyes start to bulge. And each one of those little eyes is going to make a new plant. So let's talk about flower forms and sizes for a little bit. And then I'm going to show you how to buy this and make as many as you want from this for free. Now dahlia flowers, not the plants, but dahlia flowers can range from 10 inches across or even bigger down to an inch and a half across. 
Now, as far as forms go, we're going to start with formal decorative. And formal decoratives have flat petals, and they're very evenly distributed throughout the flower. Informal decoratives are flat petals, but the placement of the petals is a little more haphazard. It gives it a little more frilly, whimsical look. Um, it, the petals can kind of twist and turn a little bit. Cafe au lait is probably, that's this one here, is probably the most popular, um, probably the most popular dahlia right now, and it's an informal decorative. Then you have a cactus dahlia, a straight cactus dahlia. And these start to look a little more like some kind of ocean creature, uh, like a, a sea urchin. The petals are very evenly placed, but they're they're rolled into a point. And so they're very spiky looking. Uh, incurved cactus is a cactus, but its petals are all incurved toward the center of the flower. And then a semi-cactus, it has the, the ends of the petals are rolled into a point, but as they move to the center of the flower, they flatten out. A ball dahlia, the petals are flat on the end and they roll inward toward the center, but they lay flat. It's kind of hard to explain. That's why I'm putting pictures. Uh, they're often, the petals are often arranged in a spiral pattern and the petals open all the way back to the stem, creating a ball effect. A water lily form, that's Emily's favorite. They're very delicate looking. They have a lot less petals. They're arranged in a very flat shape, just like a water lily. And then the smallest of all dahlias is the pompon. And that is, they're, they're almost like a ball dahlia, but they're like two inches across or less. Now, all those dahlias have closed centers. So if you're looking for something that is to attract the pollinators, to feed the bees and the butterflies, those aren't the ones you're going to want to grow. You're going to want to grow the more open centered type. So one of those, one of my favorites is the collarette. So there's a row of flower of petals around the edge. And then coming out from the center is a second smaller row of petals that are kind of fluffy, frilly looking. And then you've got that big open center with all of those nectar points for the pollinators. A single dahlia is like a collarette, except it doesn't have that inner row of frilly petals. And then an orchid type is basically the same, except the petals that are coming out from that central disc are turned in on themselves. So they have more of a, a pointy, spiky look with that open center. Now, several of these forms, but especially the cactus and the informal decorative can be laciniated. And that just means that each one of the petals, the tip has been cut, it's split, kind of like uh, a, a snake's tongue. And it gives the overall dahlia a very lacy look. I think I've forgotten a couple. But that's gonna give you a good amount to choose from when you go to order your dahlias. Uh, dahlias also come in almost every color but blue, and they have different color blends uh, in the same flower. Now, if you are more into growing vegetables than flowers, you got to use some dahlias in your vegetable patch to bring in the pollinators and to attract all of the uh, beneficial insects. And you're going to want to do that with those open center dahlias. The single, the collarette, the orchid types, all of those are going to help your vegetable plants grow better with less pests. Now, there are several ways to propagate dahlias and to get more because I'll tell you right now, when I used to grow them, and it's been a while since I've grown them because I've had too much shade at all of my properties in the past, you know, 15 years. So I'm excited to have all this sunny space now. But when I used to grow dahlias, you would open the catalog and they would be maybe three bucks. You could get them for $1.75 if it was like an old, you know, variety that was all over the place. The brand new introductions were like eight to $12. And that was like, wow. So when I got back into this, I had some sticker shock seeing the prices that they were now. Now, of course, this is like 20 years later, right? But fortunately, dahlias are really easy to propagate and multiply. So you can just buy that once and you'll never have to buy that variety again. And it will multiply and multiply year after year. And if you can find a local dahlia society, they have tuber exchanges in the spring and you bring what you have left over and so does everybody else and you can trade. So you can get new varieties that way without spending money. 
You can propagate a dahlia first by division. If you find the central stem, you're going to see this is the central stem right here. It grew last year. And around that central stem is going to be all of the tubers coming off of that. And each one of these tubers, if they have an eye, they can produce an entire plant by themselves. So you see this eye is more than an eye right here. This is actually sprouted. There's also a little eye right there. So if I were to take a knife, and I'll do a video on this later, but uh, right now just worry about getting some in the ground and not dividing them yet. But if you take a knife and you cut part of that stem off with that eye that has the tuber attached, you can take that and plant it separately. And then each one of those tubers next year will produce a whole other plant. You can divide those again. So you will have unlimited amounts of that variety. But that doesn't help you this year. If you want to buy one this year and have more than that this year, then you're going to want to take cuttings. And so what you're going to do is you're going to plant this clump into a pot and all the eyes are going to start to sprout. And if you can cut off a little bit, cut off the sprout with a little bit of tuber if possible, you don't have to, but when it's about three to four inches long, you can cut that off with a piece of the tuber if possible. Put that in a little uh, pot of well-draining seed starting mix or whatever, potting mix. That cutting is now going to produce a new plant that next year will have more tubers. But that this way you can get more plants this year. So I think that's what I'm going to do with a lot of these is put them in pots, put them inside under a grow light for now because it's still too cold outside at night. And that will help me multiply the plants for this year. Now I will take you through this process, everything I do um, in videos coming up on future Flower Fridays. Um, but you can also grow dahlias from seed. However, you're not going to get a named variety by seed. Um, if you take the seed from one plant, from you know one of these, let's say, let's say this one here, and plant it the following year, it's not going to be that dahlia. It could be something completely different. It could be a new variety that no one's ever seen before that looks great. Chances are it won't. It takes hundreds of seedlings to produce maybe one good flower that's going to be, you know, one to be named and then sold. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put these uh, in pots on a heat mat in under a grow light and see how many cuttings I can get. I hope this video inspired you to at least give dahlias a try this year, even just one. But I'm telling you, you will be hooked and it will not be just one next year. If you learned something, please give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Share this with a gardening friend, and I'll see you next time.